Uh, call the meeting to order, the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Um, the, uh, I, I guess I need to, I've, I'm new at this as the chair, Elizabeth had this down to a, to a science. Um, but I think for recording purposes, the first thing we need to do is to um, identify the members of the board who are present. So um, Mr. Kindermans, I think you on mute. We didn't hear you. I am present. Uh, terrific. Ms. Akers Moore. Present. Mr. Faia. Present. Um, Mr. G. Tom, why did I blank on your last name? And this is Thomas's mm -hmm. iPad. Just Swaim. help me. Swaim, <laughs> Mr. Swaim. <laughs> I am present. Okay, I've only known you for 25 years, but somehow I, I lose names easily. All right, um, the general uh, notion is, is that we, um, we ask people generally to stay, um, or we don't to um, not uh, be so much on video, except when you're presenting or when you're speaking on a particular matter, because it just helps the system to work a little better. Um, and uh, we will proceed with the first item on our agenda, uh, which is Greg Adams, 96 Conant Street, LLC, for a special permit under section 7.1.3, 7 7.1.5, and 11.6 of the zoning bylaw to demolish an existing 1,058 square foot dwelling. Uh, on Conan Street and constructed new 2,873 square foot dwelling that is over 50% larger than the existing gross floor area on a non-conforming lot at 96 Conan Street. Um, just as a reminder, <clears throat> we uh, had a presentation on this at our last meeting um, and the property was, um, thank you very much to the architect uh, staked out so that we could um, view the area. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to find a time when all of the members of the uh, board were able to um, uh, do the site visit together. And so um, people were, uh, went separately to see the site. Um, so that's kind of the place that we are. I don't know if the applicant would like to make any um, remarks at this point. I'm not seeing Ms. Stone, but perhaps I'm just because that's. Uh, Rich Harrington, representative for the applicant. Okay, Mr. Harrington. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for walking the site individually. Uh, we followed up with um, pr providing additional presentation of the history of the site. Uh, that we submitted in this house is surrounded by about eight houses that already have over 10,000 square feet of lot area and is sufficient. Uh, so approving this to increase the size over 50% will make this house in more harmony with the current houses that are being constructed adjacent to it. And this would be the fourth house that does exceed the 50% max. Um, and the last three zoning board of decisions have also granted relief to exceed the 50% and go just up below the uh, max FAR. And so we provide some additional presentation just for the file to, to show that if the board would like to see it. I'm sure we've looked, I mean, we get all that stuff and are able to prepare in advance. Sure. Okay, so I think that we're, this is a continued public hearing. I'll start first to see if there's any questions from the board and then we'll open it up to the public. Yeah, I, I, I have a question. You know, I went, I went to the site visit and or I went, did my site visit and walked around. Um, and you just mentioned, Ms. Harrington, that uh, there is three or four other properties on this street that have had, that have received a special permit for an increase more than 50%. Do you know by how much, uh, uh, what the percentage was that those uh, lots got their increase by? How much over the 50% it was? I can show you the square footages in that on the um, presentation that I submitted. It's on if Heather could show that. 
Uh, the, the, the last, so this is just um, this sheet. So then, 2016 town meeting approved and implemented the FAR to provide a balance with the square footage of the lot areas. If you can go down to the second, the third page. Uh, that just gives the that's the background that was provided to the citizens. This is a table. Uh, this shows the six properties along Conan Street that have insufficient area. On the left hand side, you'll from the bottom 2013, 14, and 15, there are three homes that exceeded the 50%. And then 2016, they implemented the FAR at town meeting. Uh, the highlighted blue in the middle of the page up and down shows the properties that were exceeded the 50%. To the right in the highlighted yellow shows that the three properties prior to town meeting all went over the FAR by 687, 148, and 109 going from 2015 down to 2013. Following town meeting, number 62 was below the FAR by four square feet and we're below the FAR by one, one square foot. So regardless of the percentages, because it's a ratio of lot area, um, the town meeting worked in the properties now in, in conformance with being below the max FAR. Um, so if that um, helps with the percentages of how the board has issued decisions prior. I believe we're in line with the, the last filing in 2018 for number 62, which was um, exceeded by 1,852 square feet over the allowable. We're only 1,286 over the allowable and both are just below the max FAR, uh, which is per the desire of town meeting from 2016. Uh, you scroll down one more page. This is the existing, you keep going the elevation changes of the house and the styles. Um, you can go to the, then two more pages, please. Uh, it's just the elevations, the plot plans, existing proposed, but the next page is the one I wanted to point out. Um, on the left-hand side is the 2015 plot plan of the five houses. And on the right-hand side are the four houses that at least for Sarah Stone have designed, um, number 116 and number 110 are uh, the two family dwellings and those have a GFA of 4,000 square feet each. Uh, Project 96 and the number 80 is an a and lot that doesn't require any approvals and that's at 3,548. So by increasing this floor area by over 50%, we'll coming in at 2,873 between a 4,000 square foot and a 3,548 square foot house. Remaining below the GFA of 150 would only Put us at 1587, which is half the size of the houses that are being reconstructed after being torn down uh, per Elise's design. And then like, there's more, but I can, that's, if you scroll down three more pages, um, these are the six houses right there. Okay. This is the house from 2018, which is after town meeting at number 62. Uh, that went over, that was four square feet below the max FAR. And um, in comparison, and I believe our architecture and design, um, we're well below the houses that are all near us as well. Um, hope that answers that. The, if you scroll back up, uh, the, lot, the outer corner lot, that's now going to be a, a two family, uh, uh, yeah, number 110. You say it's it's four thousand. Is that four thousand per unit or four thousand for the entire uh, building? It's for the entire building. Okay, so two thousand per unit. Yeah. Now I, I I did the I did the calculation, and you know the the there is a threshold here of fifty percent uh, that we want to. Well, that 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 triggers a special permit. So. Your, the, the, this proposal for us is asking for uh, 171%, uh, which struck me as, as just a large, a large number. And especially since this now will become the only, for this proposal will be the only three-story house on the street. Um, so I'm, 
yeah, I, I kind of want to leave it at that for now. Um, you know, those those were my observations. Uh, just a large number, and then making making this the only three story house in the street. Even those uh, the homes that you just uh, had uh, examples of, they're all two story. So, and it's actually yeah. if you could scroll, um, if you could scroll down to the well, roughly page seventeen, I have a comparison between. The other homes are at least designed and stop right there. So this is the house coming down number 128. And then, you, and then you keep going on the next screen. This is a two family that uh, Bentley Building got approved, which is, has the roof line up to three stories also in our proposal on the right. The next page shows the side profile of the two family on 110 which as you can see, they're both leases designs, very comparable in architecture. So as you drive along, you're gonna see the side of 110 on the left and the side of 96 front door on the right. So they'll both be three, the peaks will be basically within a foot of each other and the architecture and door systems are all the same. When you go to the next page, this is number 96. And then this is the, the commons across the street. The baby blue spec that you see on the left-hand side is our proposed dwelling, which will be torn down. And on the next page, this is the a &R lot to the right, number 80. Uh, the yellow final siding house is gonna to be torn down. And this is the new dwelling, for, which has again, three stories. It's um, left to right, it's a longer house, has a two car garage. So this is, these are two homes that you're gonna see left to right before you get to the stop sign at the parking lot of, of the Concord Carmen. So, um, Tough to visualize today out in the field. I, I get it because it's two capes and two small um, early period houses, but this is in keeping with the abutting properties. And if you keep going, um, this is the abutting, next abutting house in conformance with sufficient area. The next one is number 67 across the street, which has the larger peak also. And then the next one is the last conforming house within our 300 foot. <coughs> the next page shows um, the final house. So uh, we did look at the architecture. We believe it, it does meet the, the future homes that are there. Okay. I have no further question at the moment. All right. Any other questions on the board? If not, we can um, open this up. Somebody's going to have to help me because I'm not. Can use the raise hand function um, if that would be very helpful. If you see it, there we go. I see somebody, uh, Ms. Katz. Cynthia Katz, 20 Conant Street. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yep. So uh, I'm going to say what I said last time, which is I hope you'll uphold our zoning laws. I hope we won't continue to hear what we've been hearing about neighborhoods in transition. And I think that showing the homes that were built before the zoning bylaws that we're talking about is um, perhaps not very functional. These zoning bylaws were, were written specifically because of some of those houses that were shown on Conant Street and the planning board used them as the model that they don't want the town going in. Also, my understanding is this is the same design as the house on um, Lawsbrook Road right across from the gas station. And you're right, it's a huge three-story house for that lot, 171% increase where our bylaws say 50%. So I continue to hope that the ZBA will, um, will be mindful of our zoning bylaws and what the town is hoping for. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Katz. Um, Mr. Smith, I think. Hi. Thank you, uh, uh, Jonathan Smith, uh, Upland Road in Concord. Uh, I have two questions. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could clarify uh, what is included in the calculation of the GFA. Um, and my second question 
is um, the GF cal GFA calculation worksheet um, does not um, provide the necessary um, calculations. So can the board consider this application without it? Because the, um, that calculation worksheet is blank and it doesn't even have the signature of the um, town engineer. Uh, sorry, the building inspector. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, Ray, I'm gonna turn to you. Yep, so the calculations are on Lee Stone's uh, floor plans. She's done, she's done the calculations per floor. On the second page of the, where it says the calculations, this is page two you're looking at? No, it's actually, Jim, it's actually on the actual floor plans of the um, house, so our architectural plans, uh -huh. uh, A1, A2, and A3. And she has the square footage noted right on the plan. That's where I get the numbers from. So she didn't do the work, oh. but on A1, um, she's got a little chart on the right-hand side of the page that calls out all the square footage. So right over to the right, probably not that clear on this. If, if I may, um, do these bear your signature? They don't, the application does. I mean, the notes on the bottom are, are, are my notes, which says total greater than six foot eight. I mean, it says that the that it does say that the application's been reviewed by the building inspector. So I think what we're hearing is Ray that you've um, you've you're prepared to you have certified and prepared to do it again if you had to uh, that the calculations are accurate. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? That's correct. So um, um, John's right. She didn't. We didn't. Um, she, the, the FAR form wasn't filled out, but I did gather the information from this plan right here. I mean, it's all clearly noted on the plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, um, excuse me, if I may, um, the, my first question was clarifying um, about the calculation of the GFA, the GFA. So calculations, they're done, to, you take the, the uh, square footage of the first floor, the second floor, the garage, and any attic space over six foot eight. The basement's not included. The basement's not included. And it's a Ray, it's it's a different calculation for the FAR, slightly different calculation. Is that correct? Well, we have the FAR and then the gross floor area calculation. Yeah. So Those which are. is let's so which is which? The gross, so, yep. So for for this situation here, it's the FAR, which does not include the basement. And again, it's first floor, second floor, any enclosed porches, uh, detached garages, attached garages. Uh, and then any, any, like if you're in the attic, attic space over six foot eight. Okay, that's for the FAR and then the GFA is. Um... That, that includes basements. So that's okay. what we do, that's what we've done for PRDs on that application. It says gross floor area, not FAR. Right. So the difference, Mr. Smith, is that, um, and we really have, and it's sort of go to, to um, Ms. Katz's question as well. There, there are two uh, zoning bylaws at play here. The, the first is, is that uh, where you have a lot that is non-conforming for whatever reason, it doesn't have sufficient area, it doesn't have sufficient frontage, it doesn't have sufficient um, setbacks, et cetera, et cetera. And you are going to increase the size of the house by more than 50% using the calculation that Ray just talked about. 
then um, you have to come before the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit. And the rules <coughs> of that special permit are, um, I would say that the, that the uh, primary one that we nor normally go through in section 11.6 goes to the issue of how it's gonna fit into the character of the neighborhood. And one of the things that we take in, have taken into account in the past is the extent to which <clears throat> there are uh, other non-conforming lots in the neighborhood and how many of them there are. And one of the factors here, we haven't gotten to a decision yet, but one of the factors here is that seven of the eight lots that are next or near this one or adjacent to this one are all non-conforming. And so all of those lots are all conforming, excuse me, and all of those lots would be able to uh, increase the size of their homes <clears throat> without uh, reference to this, um, this particular, this first section, this gross floor area section, the 50% section. Um, and so a, a person just as a matter of right could uh, build a larger home. The second uh, set of, of bylaws, the um, floor area ratio is what was uh, voted in at town meeting a few years ago. And it is a more absolute limit. It is very hard to um, exceed that because it applies not only to non-conforming lots, but it applies to all lots um, within uh, certain uh, certain areas, C zoning, for example, in this case, um, and so they, and so that is one. That's one that's come into play here um, because the floor area ratio is uh, pushing up against the upper limit of that. And I think that the applicant would contend that um, when he said that the zoning bylaw had worked at some level was is that several homes in that area um, had been built before the floor area ratio uh, was instituted, uh, which exceeded that number. So that, um, that in, in a certain extent, um, the homes in the area are being limited by uh, the floor area ratio. I understand, thank you. Um, and just a, just a quick follow-up on that. Uh, is the attic included in the total GFA for this? For this, the uh, attic is included. The attic is included if it's more than uh, if it's six foot eight or taller um, area. And in this particular case, one of the things that they are um, doing is that they are, um, you know, varying the the portion of the third floor that's going to be uh, greater than six foot eight, depending on um, other ratios in order to stay under the gross floor area, the floor area ratio. Um, the other thing, Mr. Smith, is that all of these are subject to height requirements. Um, there is a, and this house um, meets the, the basic height requirement under the zoning bylaw. Uh, I think the main reason I was bringing up the attic is because of the, um, I, I forget how you just worded it, but how they are going to vary the space in some way and, and they did the, the calculation um, um, uh, on that. But are, are they doing the calculation on, on the entire attic space that is six foot eight? Yes. Okay. Just the wording was a little confusing, so I just wanted some. Yeah, it was. Yes, it, we we had this discussion last time too. Um, I, I found that a little confusing myself. Thank you very much. Other questions? I'm just going to look around as I'm I'm searching around to see any raised hands, other sorts of things. Elizabeth or Heather, if you could help me out, are we okay? Mr. Kinderman, um, the the house number sixty two, which was which was granted. Well, Pat, where I where oh, you're Mr. Harrington. Oh uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, just to, in reference to you, the increase in square footage percentage above existing 
the home at number 62 that was a, in 2018, which was past town meeting, was increased by 221%. Uh, so we're, we're, that exceeded our percentages that we're providing today. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All in and all done. All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, discussion by the board. Don't everyone just. I know it. You know, this opening the football season and everything tonight. Two tennis matches. <laughs> Listen, I, okay, I'll start. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the desire to keep um, historic and, and homes and what was the character of that neighborhood. Driving down that street, could I in good conscience say under 7.1.3 that this the reconstruction extension alteration or change is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming structure? I could not. I mean, it's the, the, the street is already a huge mixture of heights and styles. And I, so I don't have a problem with this. The issue of coming up against the FAR, actually you made a really good point, Jim. The FAR is working because they are trying not to exceed it. So that's one thing. Um, and then you get into the issue, I think of where would you draw the line? Theo, if you're saying, you know, so then do we say, 2,300 square feet, 2,500 square feet, 2,600 square feet. To me, it's not substantially more detrimental than the existing nonconformity. I agree. I think the optics are tough on this one because it is such a small lot. You're going right to the setback lines. It's a big house for the lot. Um, but on the other hand, I agree. You know, is it a big house for the neighborhood? At this point, it's not. Um, there, you know, there are other houses to be built, and there are houses already built that have gone to this size and beyond. And if I look at the application of the bylaw, right, it, the far is, the the max far is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and on the GFA. It, it, I, I have trouble making the finding of substantial detriment here as well. Other comments? I, I, yeah, go ahead. Theo. No, no, go ahead. No, we'll... oh. I was going to say that I, I, I sort of had the same um, view. Uh, I did drive up and down the street. A few times um, looked at the various houses. Um, I, as I mentioned in an earlier comment, I think I'm 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 somewhat persuaded and have been since I've been on the board by the fact that it's difficult to <clears throat> um, make a finding. It, it's generally difficult to make a finding that a larger house is not going to be in keeping with the neighborhood if you can look at the houses on the street and uh, and the number of conforming lots on the street and understand um, that um, you know the neighborhood over time uh, simply will change to be um, uh, one of larger houses and and Conant Street that's particularly the case um, not only because of past decisions by this board but also um, because of conforming um, lots that have uh, changed. And I think that, um, you know, for better or for worse, I think what the town is looking to its protection here is the uh, floor area ratio, um, which as we said, has worked to some degree. It's still a lot of larger houses on that street, um, but I think it's consistent. I, I don't think it's this house would be inconsistent with the neighborhood as it is currently exists and certainly as it is likely to exist. And I can, I can go along with that, especially since it, need, it meets all the other uh, criteria, FER, um, it's under height, it's under, um, I think the bulk is there, but that's not anything that, that is 
uh, quantified in uh, in the zoning bylaw. So I, I I can I can go along with the fact that it's in keeping um, since it's meet it meets the other criteria of the zoning bylaw. No. Okay, Elizabeth, are you uh, prepared to? Oh, sure. Um, I move that we um, grant a special permit to Greg Adams, 96 Conan Street, LLC, uh, under section 7.1.3, 7.15, 11.6 of the zoning bylaw to demolish the existing 1,058 square foot dwelling and construct a new 2,873 square foot dwelling that is over 50% larger than the existing gross floor area on a non-conforming lot at 96 Conan Street, parcel number 2261, subject to the findings under 7.1.3 that the, uh, what I said, reconstruction extension alteration change not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming structure and subject to the findings that I think we discussed uh, under 11.6, if anyone wants to add anything to that. Feel free. I don't have anything have, to add, but go no. ahead. We have a usual set of conditions, right? Usual set of conditions, right, Elizabeth? Ray, nothing special. Nope. Nope. All right. That that said, I'll second that motion. Okay, we'll have a vote, Mr. Kindermans. Aye. Ms. Akers Moore. Aye. Mr. Smith, aye. Thank you very much. Um, the second item on, next item on the agenda is si uh, Symes Development and Permitting LLC for special permit under sections 7.5 and 11.6 as a zoning bylaw for the construction of, um, well, actually for the removal of uh, it's because it's an earth removal permit for 60,690 cubic yards of earth at 146B and uh, 1442 Main Street and 110 and 11B Highland Street. Um, we have had a number of, um, we've had a lengthy public hearing over a number of sessions on this particular matter. A public hearing um, has been or was closed, I think two meetings ago. The board uh, deliberated um, at its last meeting um, for a fairly lengthy period of time, and um, uh, the town planner, um, uh, with the help of town council, has um, drafted a uh, a uh, decision for our review this evening. Um, I made a couple of comments. Um, and it's been sort of redrafted uh, slightly to pick up those comments, all of which I think are on the in the public record. So um, I will open it up for discussion of the board. Go ahead, Elizabeth. <laughs> you saw that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I thought I, I thought it was generally well done, and I uh, appreciated your your edits, Jim. Um, one Thanks. question: eleven point six point two. When we say the board finds the proposal includes adequate mitigation measures to address concerns with traffic, is that true? I thought we decided that we weren't convinced, even during cons during construction, that those measures were adequate. Yeah, I don't I think know. What we, I, I think Go what ahead, you may John. have had the engineering department, as I remember, submitted a letter suggesting that those heavy trucks on uh, 62 going west, even though it was taking a the soils to uh, nuclear metals, may be a concern for the welfare of six, Route 62. Other than that, I don't think there was significant discussion uh, about the. Um, the effect of the uh, travel on the Route 62 Main Street. So do we feel comfortable conceding that finding or? Uh, 
I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with it. Yes, there is going to be heavy trucking, but after construction, um, uh, um, it'll, yeah, which is really not, uh, not what we're looking at. But I, 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 ha I don't have a problem stating that this because it, again, just like almost the other application, it, it, it will meet all the requirements. Roads are designed for these trucks. They, they are not. They are allowed on these roads. You know, there there is a substantial amount more, but the roads can handle that capacity is there. So I, I don't have a problem with the statement as it is written. I don't remember any adequate mitigation measures, I guess is my problem. I mean, I'm it's not a shouldn't hold up the decision or anything, but I guess I, I'm not sure if there were well, any Lynn, mitigation. Uh, you may remember there was a letter from the engineering group which identified the times of going back and forth the number mm. of trucks there would be if you consider those mitigation matters not sure you do right. but right, right. Information. Yeah. maybe I, I, i'm thinking of was, some oh, sorry go ahead Robbie. A, i think there was a maybe a piece to the lot next to the entrance and exit that was going to give a greater kind of radius for the trucks to come in and out and and, and ability to see down main street I, I vaguely remember something like that. So maybe that's, you know, I, 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 I think there's something in the record about mitigation measures, but I agree with you. I'm not sure that, you know, I'm not sure we speak completely to the traffic flow and safety concerns by just mentioning this and not other things, but I'm kind of with you. I'm not sure it's, yeah. I'm not sure it hurts to have it there um, because, I, you know, what, what would we ask them to do? otherwise to mitigate it right it's like yeah maybe i'm thinking about don't, some... drive, don't take the earth off yeah. <laughs> Walk you know, it if off. you're going well, to take the earth off done enough to, <clears throat> take the earth, would have done enough to to mitigate the um the safe the traffic concerns right maybe what's sticking in my mind is something about neighborhood conversation about noise and, and fumes and things I, i'm fine going with it i just raise it because it stuck out to me as something that i don't remember necessarily agreeing with but if it's in the record and we're comfortable with it that's fine yeah, and, to, and to your point there is a uh, line of sight trucking plan you know so they okay. did that was a mitigation okay thank you i think the only other um, thing yeah. i had just looking at the draft is this in 7.5.3.3 the last line says some or all the board members also visit the site individually and based their own and based on their own observations, they understood the importance of the hillside sound barrier. I'm not sure the word understood is right. I think I think that we um, can, you know, at least in my case, I'll just speak to myself because I did visit the site and on I've been at that site on several locations. I've been by that site. I used to I used to walk by there on a daily basis to the trains and all that kind of stuff. And so I've, I've certainly stood there and, and um, in the past and during this period. And I think that, you know, based on my own observation there, you know, the, the hillside, the hillside provides an important sound barrier. You know, I've concluded that the hillside pr provides an important sound barrier. That's what I would say, but that that's that's one observation. This thing goes to the to the board as a whole. So, what is it that you'd like it to say, Jim? It said that based on our own um, on their their own observations, they have included they have con they concluded that the hillside provides an important sound barrier. Have we, have we got there or not yet? No. No, not yet. What I, what I'm seeing isn't what I said there were. Yeah. yeah. So we would say that the hillside 
provides an important sound barrier. So kind of move those words around there. The... Perfect. Excellent. Other comments? I didn't have any uh, further comments. I thought it was very well, well written and uh, uh, very good. All right. Well, hearing none, can I have a motion to, I guess, what are, now are we? Oh, well, I just, I guess I would note that we still in, in the decision, in the third paragraph of the decision, we have to say what the vote was. I guess that'll be filled in, right? Yes. Um, so, so now I think we're, um, the motion here is to, I just wanna be clear, is it to deny the permit or is it to, or, or to adopt this decision or both? Um, I would say both. Okay. Both. Okay. So do our lawyers. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and um, move Thank that. You, um, that uh, in for the Symes Development and Permitting LLC application for a special permit under Section 7.5, 11.6 of the Zoning Bylaw for the construction of a definitive subdivision requiring the removal of 60,690 cubic yards of earth at 146B and 1442 Main Street. 110 and 11 B Highland Street, parcels number 2407, 2408, 2409, 2409 1. The board denies the permit uh, and also uh, adopts the decision dated, what, what do we say, as of today or the, as, 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 of, as, yes. as amended? As amended. As amended at this hearing. And second. Mr. Kinderman's. Aye. Ms. Akers Moore. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you to town council for your assistance. Thank you to everyone who has, including the applicant who's worked um, very hard on this matter for a long time. Um, these things are, um, these items are complicated and uh, appreciate everyone's time and patience in trying to work it through. Hi, thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Probably lose a few people. Um, so moving on, <clears throat> next one should be pretty quick. Um, we have the Concord Housing Authority for a special permit and site plan review under sections 10, 11.6 and 11.8 uh, related to a uh, two unit plan residential development at 365 Commonwealth Avenue. And I understand uh, that the applicant would um, has asked us to uh, continue um, this matter without discussion to the October up to our October 14th meeting. Uh, do I have a motion to that effect? So, yeah, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Kindermans. Uh, second. Elizabeth, are you seconding it? Sorry, yes, I second. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Ms. Akers Moore. Aye. Mr. Kindermans. Aye. Mr. Smith. Uh, this will be at the October 14th meeting. Do we have a time for this one? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven. Oh my gosh. Does that mean that we have nothing else going on on the October 14th meeting? <laughs> uh, no, no, but this is, this is going to be first on the agenda. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Next is uh, Stephen Ferry. Uh, for a special permit under section 713 and 11.6 of the zoning bylaw to construct a 208 square foot addition on an existing uh, 1,339 square foot non-conforming dwelling on a non-conforming lot at 35 Seymour Street. For those others in attendance, I'll just note that this is not a situation where there's an excess of 50% or anything else. The issue here is that um, as I'm sure Mr. Ferry will note, uh, that the, the 
a lot is non-conforming, I believe, because of setback. And so as in before us, even, even though um, it is a relatively smaller um, addition. And who's Mr. Ferry? There you are. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your uh, consideration so, tonight. Uh, so we have to do the whole, you know, Mr. Oh, Ferry, you have to address. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Stephen Ferry, and I'm the owner of the house at 35 Seymour Street in Concord. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, what is proposed here, uh, and, and you're absolutely correct, the front setback is not uh, a full 40 feet, and also it's less than one acre. Uh, the proposed work is all inside the existing footprint of the house. It's all inside the existing roofed area of the house. And if I can explain this, uh, there I've supplied both a survey uh, done by the surveyor a month or two ago, as well as the nine sheets my architect has drawn. The proposal is to take the front porch, which is totally roofed and has a cement floor. And um, uh, there we go, okay. So let me, this is on White Pond. So just to orient you, uh, this is looking west. So White Pond is on the left side of this. And thank you very much, uh, Ms. Carey, for putting this up. And what we're talking about is not the end, the end. Seymour Street is running uh, on the right side up and down. So there's Seymour Street, correct. Uh, and there are more or less seven houses on Seymour Street. Uh, the uh, lot is 138 feet from the street down to uh, the White Pond. What we're talking about is not the larger triangular portion of the house, which has uh, the, an, a completely undivided living room kitchen eating area and kitchen. There's no, there are no doors separating that, which is one of the noise factors that I want to mention. It's the square at the bottom that sort of comes down like the bottom of the T on the screen. So it's that. And um, the reason for what we'd like to do is the existing porch there that was just uh, outlined. That's the existing porch. What we'd like to do, it is now enclosed on two sides, as you can see. We'd like to enclose the other two sides to be able to put a stairway in it and keep it enclosed so that the rain and the snow doesn't uh, go up the steps to be able to get to the attic, uh, the attic area on the second floor above the, uh, the lower portion of that, that, that lower square. Uh, the reason for this, uh, let me explain the reason because I think that's a part of, of why we're proposing this. Uh, my wife and I have lived in the house for the last 21 years. Um, one of the reasons we'd like to get uh, some office space and some quiet is both of us are professors at different universities in Boston. For the last year and a half, we've been totally teaching online, and some of our courses are still online, uh, although some of mine are back in the classroom now. Uh, and so we would often be sitting in the large, tri it's, not, it's not a large house, it's 1,300 square feet total. Uh, we would be sitting in the, uh, the larger rectangle. I'd be sitting at the coffee table in the living room. My wife would be sitting 10 feet away at the kitchen table. We'd both be trying to teach Zoom classes for a couple hours, talking over each other. And we, we, uh, th that was really the impetus after 21 years to say, is there any other place we could put a desk? There are two very small bedrooms. Both of those bedrooms, one has a, a king size bed in it. The other has two uh, 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 smaller beds and there's no room for a desk in either one. Our architect came out and said, if you enclose the existing porch, no additional roof area, no additional uh, expansion of any of the existing space, you could get up to the uh, attic area and you could use that as a loft area for, so, for an office, for office purposes and for teaching and everything else that you might use it for. So that's the impetus for this after 21 years, we found it to, to be something we'd like to do. So um, again, I guess uh, the, uh, what I'd like to say, here's some of the plans. Yeah, so maybe I guess, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Carey for putting that up. Okay, so there we have it. So this is uh, looking, uh, that's the front, the existing uh, front doors where the one is, uh, I'm sorry, the existing front doors where, where uh, Heather's uh, arrow is. The, uh, the area that is, uh, that says entry is a, uh, a cement floor porch with a roof over the entire area. And uh, it's about 13 feet left to right. It's six feet deep, which is just enough for a three foot stairway and some change. So what we would do is move the front door out to the edge of the existing porch, which is number one there on that, uh, on that drawing. 
you'd come into the front door at the beginning of the porch, you'd make a left turn, go up the stairs, they'd make a right turn. They would probably have to go a little bit into the, uh, the space up there, the attic space. And uh, we'd end up with an attic area that would be about 13 feet by 15 feet, which is about 200 square feet. There we go. Okay. So the, square, the, the stairs would come up and intrude a little bit to get enough height. Also to meet code, we would, put, we would redo the roof so it had the required roof, uh, the entire building height on the walls. I can very quickly tell you that what that would be. The existing roof is, uh, so the, well, maybe you can go down to just slightly lower to the next, there we go. That's the existing roof. And the existing roof is, uh, you can see it there. It doesn't look like a roof, but the left side is a, is a roof there on that line. The existing roof height is a total of 28 feet. What would happen uh, by squaring off that room so it had the code compliant height is that the roof would be raised two feet, three inches. So it would go from 28 feet to 30 feet and a few inches. Uh, the uh, height limit is 35 feet, so we'd stay well below that. And um, we'd end up with about 200 square feet of existing space. There's an A-frame roof over it now, so you can stand up in the middle of it. But if you move a step or two to the side, you bump your head on the on the A-frame roof coming off. So what we would do is we would square it off so you could stand up and there'd be room for a desk and a chair and some space up there and give us some privacy. The other important thing I will note is that's on the quiet side of the house. It's over a bedroom and a bathroom there behind the, the front door on the on the right side. Um, the whole house is clabbered. The architect just drew the clabbers on this side that's affected, but the entire house has clabbers on it like this. And so we'd be away from the living room and the TV, the kitchen noise, uh, and it could be a little quieter and the room already exists. So we'd go up uh, two feet, uh, three inches, uh, about 30 feet and maybe a few inches of total height. There is uh, something and all under the existing roofed area, not another square foot of roof or anything like that. Um, the White Pond Advisory Committee asked me to bring something to your attention, which I would like to do. Uh, two weeks ago, I was before the White Pond Advisory Committee and we were uh, discussing this and they uh, said, thank you very much. And I sat back down and they moved to approve this and as I was sitting down, they said, are, are you planning to put gutters or uh, just a drip edge on this? And I said, I haven't even thought that far ahead. Uh, what would you like? And uh, so they said, thanks very much. And I sat down. And so there was a move to uh, go ahead and, and have uh, gutters on it, which I'm fine with. And then just as they were voting, one of the members said, and let's do a dry well also. And they were in a hurry to get to the next item. And so they said, OK. And they did that. So I spoke to them afterwards and I said, I need to go back and look at the house and actually see if there's room for it. Now, again, I think the reason that probably a dry well doesn't uh, make any particular sense for rainwater is there's not an extra square inch of roof being built. The roof is already there. It already has gutters um, and uh, it's been there for, for decades. The, um, the physical thing is on the, and, and maybe Ms. Carey, if you could go back to the first, uh, that first slide of the survey, that would be useful if you could do that. Um, I don't know whether that's convenient. I've also got it, but it, maybe it's easier for you to do it. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, good. So again, on the, um, what would be the east side of the house, which is the bottom area, um, in that little area right along the house there, and that's about 16 feet, it's not a very large <laughs> area. The bedroom under there is only nine feet by about uh, 13 feet. It's not a particularly big bedroom, as I mentioned. There are two gigantic oak trees and six ferns that occupy that entire area. One of the oak trees is about 70 feet tall. There's no way I could go into anything on the east side of the house to put a dry well in, aside from the fact that there's no additional uh, rain runoff because we're not changing the existing roof area in any way. If you look on the left side, there is a deck right there. Thank you. Yeah, that is a deck. And the measurement of the deck out through the steps down uh, is 24 feet. And the problem there would be if we ran some kind of a, uh, what you do, some kind of a conduit or PVC pipe across that deck, uh, A, that would not meet codes for safety, people would trip over it. So it's, there's, not, there's nowhere on the downside or the side side where there's any place that I can conveniently put a dry well in. And I think the other issue, uh, even more uh, perhaps relevant to you is there's no additional roofed area, no additional rain, rain runoff because the existing porch and the house is, is entirely roofed uh, now. 
And so the, I went back to the White Pond Advisory Committee a few hours later and I said, there's nothing out here. And they said, well, we understand, but we sent it in immediately after our meeting. So the zoning board already has it. So why don't you just explain this to the zoning board and I'm sure they'll take it under consideration. So I think, oh, let me say one more thing that I will say. Um, this lot, um, again, it's about 138 feet uh, left to right from the pond to the street. The street on the, um, on the city map says it's an additional 40 feet. This is about a quarter of an acre. Uh, it has an existing two small bedrooms, but I also have permanent septic rights on the lot, which is over a quarter acre on the other side of Seymour Street. So basically to the right across Seymour Street. Uh, both lots together are larger than a half an acre. I have permanent septic rights that's in the application that I've submitted to the ZBA. Um, and there's, there's, no, there's no house on that lot. And uh, all the septic rights have been, have been uh, granted to, to my lot. My septic actually comes out of the house, goes under Seymour Street, comes up on the other side. So once it gets across Seymour Street, it's already give or take 180 feet away. And it goes about halfway back into another 100 foot lot over there. So I'm uh, probably at the, I'm roughly 230 feet. And the septic disposes over there on a very flat parcel uh, with no slope uh, way over there. So that septic is probably about as far off of, uh, of uh, the pond as, as any of the septic on, on, uh, on, on, on White Pond or, or very close to the, certainly the, the greatest. And I've also included a, uh, a statement from the owner of that lot across the street supporting this application. And I have talked to the neighbors about this and none of them has, has raised any concern and showed them the, the plans. I'm happy to take any questions or, or answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Perry. <clears throat> any questions from the board at this stage? If not, okay. I'll open, thank you very thorough. I'll, I'll open up to the public. Use the raised hands function if you're interested. I do, we I acknowledge we did get receipt of the neighbor's um, letter, as well as other things that are in the public record. All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Discussion? It was a, it was a uh, very good explanation for a uh, very small addition. Um, and an explanation like only a professional lecturer can do, I think. Um, but um, yeah, no, I think it uh, is totally appropriate. It's totally uh, in keeping with the, with the neighborhood. And uh, I don't see anything, uh, anything. Uh, I think our key know. here, I agree. And I think our key here is just that sh is the fact that it does not increase the existing nonconformity, correct? Right, correct. I agree. Okay. Anyone want to jump in for a motion? Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the application from Stephen Perry for a special permit on the section 713 and 11.6 of the zoning bylaw to construct. 208 square foot addition on the existing 1,339 square foot non-conforming dwelling on a non-conforming lot at 35 Seymour Street, parcel 3255, uh, with the finding that it does not uh, increase, uh, the addition does not increase the uh, non-conformity, existing non-conformity. And that it's that it's in keeping with uh, with the neighborhood. Then. Second. Any other comments? Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Kindermans. Aye. Ms. Akers Moore. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Um, Thank you. All right. Next. Um, and I think last in terms of the public hearings tonight, uh, Frederick and Adam uh, Bagan, hopefully I've said that correctly, for a special permit under sections 4.2.2.2 and 11.6 of the bylaw for a 576 uh, square foot additional dwelling unit at 31 Fern Street. We have the applicant there. Hello. Ms. Began, did I get your names pronounced right or not? Enough, Frederick Began, 31 Began. Street. Okay, thanks, Thank Mrs. you. Ms. Began. 
everybody. So just to clarify, because it is presented in a little bit of a confusing manner, the addition is already existing. It was approved by ZBA a couple of years ago. What we are looking to do at this point, that addition is the dwelling of my mother who is elderly and not entirely well. Uh, and what we are hoping to do is build a little kitchenette into her existing apartment so that she can maintain some independence. Additionally, my husband and I are both uh, working from home currently. Uh, and so, and I'm a, a psychotherapist, so I need privacy for my sessions, which are kind of ongoing given the current mental health uh, epidemic. Uh, so she often does not feel comfortable to enter our home, even though we've invited her to, to use the kitchen. Uh, so this would grant her some independence and autonomy. Um, and as you see there in uh, the top right corner, there would be just a little L-shaped countertop with a couple of simple appliances uh, so that she could cook. I do the bulk of the cooking for larger meals for dinners and so forth for her, but she could cook a little breakfast and a little um, lunch and do her own dishes and, and, and so forth. So that is what we were requesting from the ZBA this evening. Thank you, Ms. Megan. Um, Comments for questions from the board, Elizabeth. I'm I'm all since we these are new, um, since our additional dwelling regulations have been moving around a little bit. Um, the last few town meetings, um, is there you just walk us through what the key issues that we need to address are? Um, so I um, apologize, I don't know off the top of my head. What's the square footage of the additional dwelling unit? Uh, square feet. Five, 576, 576. So Elizabeth, if you want, I have the sheet in front of me. So we article 32 or 4222. I can go over it if you'd like. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks, Ray. Okay, so there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's like 14 requirements of the for the additional dwelling units now. Um, one of them, A, it has to be on a lot. So it has to, this is in residence A, 40,000 square feet is required. And they have less than 40,000 square feet. So that's why this is being triggered for a special permit. It's less than the 750 that they can do by right, but the lot size is undersized. And then- so so just stop you right there. So then, so that but for but for the lot size, they could have they could have done everything they're asking to be done here would be done by right. Is that correct? Through the building permit, uh, through the building department and board of health. Okay. The building also has to meet setbacks. Um, the existing house before the addition did not meet setbacks. It's um, you see. It, the front setback should be 40, it's 18 feet, but the, the whole addition meets setbacks. It's the right-hand side of the house, you'll see it on a plot plan. Right. We live in the funky white pond neighborhood on the other side of the pond from our neighbor, Mr. Ferry, who just presented. So uh, Jim, to answer your question, um, under section 4222, um, the board by, may grant by special permit a reduction in the required setbacks for um, additional dwelling unit. Uh, the board may grant a special permit for relief for an additional dwelling unit located on a lot with less than the required minimum lot size for the zone district and or an additional dwelling unit up to a thousand gross feet and or a reduction in the required setbacks for a detached additional dwelling unit provided that the desired relief granted without substantial detriment to the neighborhood and without degrading from the intent and purpose of the bylaw. Gotcha. So the, this um, project had a previous special permit to um, or it's, a, it's an existing legal non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot. Right. So correct me if I'm wrong, Ray. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. So there's no- They're applying under 4222 two, two, and 7.13. Right. 
So the board would have to find that the additional dwelling unit on this reduced size lot would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and the additional dwelling units um, does not increase the non-conforming nature, which would be the setbacks and the lot size. Great, thank you. Very helpful. Other questions from the board before we do public? I, I sort of have a technical question because 4222F says no use or occupancy of the ADU shall be allowed prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy by the building inspector. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I understand this is space that's being used in the house and we're just putting a kitchen in, which makes it the ADU. So mm -hmm. are we just sort of, we just understand that is the reality here. Um, so that's kind of a mood condition here. Right. I mean, okay. I, to your point, you're right. The mother the mother already lives there. It's yeah. In the kitchen. So I don't think we need to throw her out till we get the kitchen in. <laughs> right. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> so, you. Thank you. Have to so grateful. <laughs> No, I, I, I have no problem. I understand Mr. Ferry's got an extra room. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's right down the street from us. So you have a lovely family, so be careful. I'd love to invite everybody over. <laughs> no, I, I think this is a great project. I'm, uh, I'm happy with it, so. Great, thank you. All right, um, I think we'll move to public comment, if any. All right. Well, we're down to a, a only small few. I can see everybody on the same screen. Uh, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, do we have any further discussion? Um, certainly, I second whoever said, uh, Mr. Faye said that it was a great project and obviously very well presented. So uh, well thought out. Any no further discussion? If we can have motion, that'd be great. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, special permit for Frederick and Adam Begin for uh, under section 4222 and 11.6, the zoning bylaw for a 576 square foot additional dwelling unit at 31 Fern Street, parcel 3379. It findings that it uh, is not um, is, uh, in. It's not substantially uh, more detrimental to the neighborhood, and it does uh, not increase the nonconformities that are currently existing on the lot. Second, do I have a second? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to say it doesn't derogate from the uh, intent of the bylaw or something. Um, Perfect. Yeah, second. <laughs> okay. Oh, Mr. Kinderman. Aye. Ms. Ms. Akers Moore. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Uh, it's motions carried. Thank you very much. Um, good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Meneer Kindermans, for the rare, correct pronunciation of my first name. That's an unusual thing in the sure. United States. <laughs> thank you all so much for your time and consideration. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, I think that's it for hearings. We have the minutes, I believe, at least it says on this agenda of uh, July 8th. So um, I th they were sent uh, later this afternoon. So if um, the board did not have time to review those, we can postpone those to the next meeting. I think that'd be good. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, Jim, right. Jim wants to go watch a football game. So, or a tennis. No, no, my wife watches tennis. So, I'd be seeing eighteen-year-olds play tennis, no matter what thing you watch tonight. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Public comment. I see Ms. Escobedo on, on in her spot. All right. Seeing none, hearing none, uh, we will adjourn. We've stopped doing motions to adjourn, right? Yeah. We're adjourning. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you don't need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you on October 14th. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.